My name is Laureen Montero. I'm the city archaeologist for Phoenix. It's my pleasure today to tell you about prehistoric long distance interactions, the non-local pottery from Pueblo Grande. As you may know, Pueblo Grande is one of the most significant Hohokam platform mound communities in the Lower Salt River Valley. And it was the home to the ancestors of the Otham people, also known as Pima, who now reside on the Gila and Salt River Indian communities. There are other tribes who claim cultural affiliation with the Hohokam, like the Hopi and the Zuni. Out of respect for our Native American communities, who did not call this amazing place Pueblo Grande, I will try to refer to this archaeological site and traditional cultural place by its number, AZU-91, abbreviated to U-91. The Hohokam is an archaeological term that I will use in this talk. We don't know what these ancestral people called themselves. The Hohokam are well known for their widespread trade networks, and pottery is an important component in this trade. This paper presents data on previously unpublished non-local pottery from Pueblo Grande Archaeological Park that was excavated from the 1930s on up to the 1980s and discusses its significance. For purposes of this talk, I'll refer to this as the PG Park Collection. We grouped the pottery types according to wares, which reflect pottery making traditions of different regions and cultures. We did this for comparison with non-local pottery collected during data recovery conducted in the late 1980s and early 1990s on the northeastern side of Pueblo Grande to mitigate impacts from the State Route 143. That portion of U91 dates from the late sedentary through classic occupation, approximately AD 1000 to 1450. There are 451 pottery sherds in this collection, which amounts to only 0.001% of the total of more than 767,000 pottery sherds that were collected from PG Park during this time. Only one whole vessel was in this collection, a Kana'a black on white jar, which was part of a colonial period cache of cremated bighorn sheep horns and other artifacts in the plaza area west of the platform mound. The sherds in the PG Park collection represent at least 19 different wares with 62 different types, 57 unidentified types that could be grouped into ware categories, and some that could not be typed beyond recognizing that they're not locally made. Most of the sherds are from bowls, representing 220 bowls versus 128 jars, with the remainder not identified as to vessel form. This ratio is relatively typical for non-local pottery assemblages from Hohokam sites. The study of non-local pottery can inform us about change in cultural interactions over time, for instance, previous studies have shown that the Hohokam imported many trade wares from northern Arizona during the pre-classic periods, and more from southern Arizona during the later classic period. For example, these are Gila white on red sherds from AZU-91 that are part of the central Arizona ceramic tradition. They were manufactured between AD 1200 and 1400. We can compare sites and make inferences about which groups were interacting with different Hohokam villages. We can also learn if different households had more access to trade wares than to others. Our study is somewhat limited by the absence of specific provenience data because they come from early excavations that were not always well documented. But we can at least look at what was present on or near the platform mound versus from houses, pits, and trash mounds located away from the platform mound. The non-local pottery from Pueblo Grande Park date from the colonial period through the classic period, AD 750 to 1450, with most sherds from the sedentary period, which is roughly AD 950 to 1150. However, at least 15 different non-local ceramic types were found at PG Park during the Classic period, 
AD 1150 to 1450. This indicates that interaction with northern and southern groups was active during this time period. The wide variety of non-local pottery types at PG Park were acquired from several different cultural groups or regions, including the Cayenta, Little Colorado, and Cibola branches of the ancestral Pueblo, also Mugion, Cojonina, Prescott, and others. In this slide, PG Park frequencies are compared with SR143 frequencies. PG Park is represented in blue and SR143 is represented in red. Tucson whitewares, Little Colorado whitewares, and Tucson Basin brownwares are common in each collection. Though the frequency of Tucson whiteware and Tucson Basin brownware is much higher in the PG Park study. In fact, the total number of sherds is about twice as high in PG Park, which is interesting considering that more excavation was actually done in the SR-143 corridor than in the PG Park. Cibola whiteware, Jedito yellowware, and San Juan redware are more frequent in PG Park compared to SR-143, including both early types like San Juan redwares from AD 825 to 1065, and some later types, such as Jedito Black on Yellow, which are Hopi wares, that were made roughly from AD 1300 to 1600. San Francisco Mountain Gray ware is absent from the SR-143 project, yet from PG Park there were four Deadman's Black on Gray, which date from AD 1025 to 1175, and five Floyd Black on Gray, which date from AD 700 to 1025. The clay used to make this particular pottery was acquired from the bottom of the Grand Canyon, quite a distance away. In contrast, Lower Colorado buffware were more common in the SR-143 project. Two perforated plate fragments classified as Tonto Brown were found only in the PG Park collection, one of them near the platform mound and the other one from an unknown location. These unusual pottery vessels are reportedly associated with Cayenta groups and may have been used for pottery making. We assume that pottery and other objects found near the mound had greater value or cultural meaning and or were strong indicators of connectivity with other groups than pottery found away from the platform mound. The yellow dots in this slide represent non-local pottery plotted in GIS and show where they occur in our project area. These aren't all of the non-local pottery in our collection, but just the, the sherds that we had precise location data for. 100 of the non-local sherds are from the platform mound. 26 are from pit houses. 49 are from the trash mounds. 5 are from cremations one of those being the bighorn sheep cache mentioned earlier. Three are from the ball court and only two are from pits. Others were found in trenches or other excavations where a feature or specific contextual information either didn't exist or was not recorded. Tucson whiteware associated with the ancestral Pueblo culture of northern Arizona is the most common ware in our study with a total of 96 sherds. These were manufactured from colonial through early classic periods. Most of these sherds in our collection are Kana'a black on white, dating from AD 800 to, to 1025, and Black Mesa black on white, dating from 1025 to 1150. These two types occur in equal amounts. Tucson whiteware were found in concentrations that correspond to some of the trash mounds and other non-platform mound areas. This isn't surprising since their manufacture and occurrence in trade contexts generally predates platform mound architecture. 70 sherds were classified as Tucson Basin San Carlos wares, with most being Tanca Verde red on brown. The Tanca Verde red on brown date to the classic period A.D. 1150 to 1300. Analysis by Dr. Andy Lack 
determined that production sources for these non-local pottery sherds were variable. The Tortolita and Tucson Mountains and likely associated washes are probably where these materials came from. U91 did not appear to have any type of exclusive relationship with a particular production source for this type of pottery. Therefore, it appears U91 maintained economic networks with various groups in the Tucson Basin. Tankaverde red on brown were more commonly found on the PG platform mound or close to it, suggesting this pottery was associated with platform mound activities. Tucson Basin brownware were also common in the SR-143 collection, which included eight sherds that were subjected to neutron activation analysis, confirming that they were made outside of the Phoenix Basin. There were 39 Little Colorado whiteware sherds. These sherds are associated with the ancestral Pueblo culture of northern Arizona. Holbrook black on white was the most common. Little Colorado whiteware were particularly prevalent in the SR-143 collection, where there were more than from PG Park. This ware occurred more frequently in non-mound areas. There were 36 Cibola whiteware. Most of these are snowflake black on white. Cibola whiteware types were produced by northern Mogollon and or southern Pueblo groups across a wide area of west central New Mexico and east central Arizona. Cibola is a ceramic expression that seems to incorporate both northern Mogollon and or southern Pueblo groups. A few Cibola whiteware sherds were found on the U91 platform mound. 33 Jedito yellowware sherds were found in the PG Park collection. This is a relatively large quantity for a Hohokam site. These include Jedito black on yellow, a Wadavi black on yellow, and others that could not be identified specifically as to which of these two types, Jedito or a Wadavi, they were. Jedito yellowware was one of the most widely distributed ceramic wares in the late prehistoric period of the American Southwest first being produced around A.D. 1325 or 1330 and manufactured up to or past A.D. 1600. It's a very distinctive type of ware. The paste is made from a kaolin clay with a very low iron content, which was fired with coal in an oxidizing atmosphere to create a yellow color and a very hard vessel. Jedito yellowware was made exclusively in at least five villages on the Hopi mesas. Most of the Jedito yellowware sherds in this collection were found associated with the platform mound complex. Seven of them were, were from room 44 in the northwest compound. Also, um, there were some in the room next door to there. Found in room 44 with these Jedito yellowwares was a large bone tube, possibly a cloud blower, a red colored stone axe, a cache of 45 obsidian nodules, several pieces of turquoise, a selenite pendant, a rubbing stone, green minerals, pottery discs, and many salado polychrome sherds. Other non-local sherds were found in this room as well. According to this study, room 44 and nearby rooms had access to high-value pottery obtained from sources located long distances from U91, perhaps to be used in feasting ceremonies associated with the platform mound. Only four Jedito yellowware were found in two habitation areas in the State Route 143 portion of U91. This is further evidence of their association with the platform mound. Building on a study by Dr. David Doyle, comparing non-local pottery from U91 and two other large villages, Las Calinas and La Ciudad, all of which are north of the Salt River along what we call Canal System 2. These other sites have numbers that are somewhat similar, so I'm going to go ahead and use their names to avoid any confusion. U91 is located at the headwaters of Canal System 2. Canal System 2 contained more than four main canals that linked with other major Hohokam settlements situated farther down the system. 
These major settlements consist of, consisted of villages with public architecture, such as platform mounds and ball courts, surrounded by smaller settlements, hamlets, farmsteads, and field houses. Together they formed what has been called an irrigation community. In the Classic period, three major settlement districts can be discerned on Canal System 2. Pueblo Grande, or U91, La Ciudad, T121, and Las Colinas, T1210. U91 has the most diverse assemblage of these three important villages. La Ciudad and Las Colinas did not contain Zuni glaze ware, Winslow orange ware, or northern Mexican Chihuahuan wares. Las Colinas, located at the end of Canal System 2, is the largest village with possibly up to 10 platform mounds. Non-local pottery at this site indicates interaction with three geographic regions, northern Arizona, southern Arizona, and western Arizona. A preponderance of lower Colorado buffware, more than 4,000 sherds, and 12 whole vessels, in addition to 1,500 other non-local pottery sherds, was found at Las Colinas, with most of the lower Colorado buffware found at several houses in House Group 18, west of the platform mound. This concentration suggests an enclave of lower Colorado River populations at Las Colinas. Dr. Glenn Rice has proposed that this enclave was recruited by the leaders of Las Colinas as laborers to help the village located at the end of Canal System 2 to ensure they obtained irrigation water controlled by U91 at the head of the canal system during low water flows. Excluding Lower Colorado buffware, Tucson whiteware are most common at Las Colinas, similar to U91. Not all Tanca Verde red on brown at Las Colinas were non-local. Weed, 1974, suggested about half may have been locally made, which suggests that some individuals at Las Colinas also may have been recruited from the Tucson Basin. La Ciudad, or T-12-1, is located in the middle of Canal System 2 and had a ball court and two platform mounds. Most of the excavations here have examined pre-classic components. A smaller quantity and variety of non-local pottery were found at La Ciudad. There, there are the same major types in the same order of frequency, that is with Tucson whiteware being the most, Tucson Basin brownware, Little Colorado whiteware, and Cibola whiteware in that order. The two settlements on each end of Canal System 2 U91, located at its headwaters, and Las Colinas, located at its terminus, had the largest and greatest variety of non-local pottery. U91 may have been a destination and trading center, while Las Colinas may have competed with U91 for status and influence. In conclusion, a wide variety of non-local pottery types were present at U91, in the PG Park collection, and they were acquired from several different cultural groups, including the Cayenta, the Little Colorado, and Cibola branches of the ancestral Pueblo, the Mugion culture, Cojonina culture, Prescott, and Northern Mexico. The non-local pottery date from the colonial through classic periods, with most sherds from the sedentary period. Based on the data from this study, northern Arizona non-local pottery was most common at U91, especially Tucson wares. The collection consists largely of sherds, and it is not possible to state with confidence that each of these sherds represents an entire vessel that was traded into U91. Sherds could have been curated by ethnic groups that came to visit or stay at U91 or they may have been picked up by U91 inhabitants during travels and forays. The sherds themselves may have had significant meaning to the inhabitants of U91, representing pieces of place with social value because of their geographic importance rather than from their original use as vessels. On the other hand, the sherds may represent the remains of vessels that were broken during use 
or intentionally when a domestic or ritual space was abandoned, with a portion of the vessel left behind as part of a closing ceremony. Most of our conclusions are consistent with patterns seen at other Hohokam village sites. There's a preponderance of Northern Arizona wares in contexts that suggest pre-classic use or occupation. Classic period wares, such as Jedito yellowware and Tanka Verde red on brown, are predominantly, but not exclusively, from the platform mound complex. The presence of these and other non-local sherds indicate interaction with northern and southern groups was active at U91 during the Classic period. Thank you.